Hello, I'm Chuck Phillip of South Alabama Home Inspections, and welcome to another edition of Southern Home Talk. It's amazing how many episodes I can make and just go probably go on indefinitely because there's so many components to a home, and it's a possibility you may have this component to it as well. And what this is is a condensate pump. Uh, you probably don't have it if it's a newer house, but if you've bought an older home, there's a potential it could have it. And so next time you go change your air conditioner filter, you'll see something similar to this. It may not be the same color. Uh, you'll see where the pipe actually connects to this. And what this is is a condensate pump, and it's designed to pump the condensate water from your air conditioning to the outside. Sometimes when they install these systems, uh, they're in a position where they can't get it to grade and where it just won't flow uh, by natural gravity, so they have to install one of these. But one of the most important things about this is it has to be installed correctly. Now you'll see that there's two uh, bare wires. Uh, some units uh, probably don't have this, but what these wires are for, uh, they're supposed to connect to the thermostat of your HVAC system in case this malfunctions, it'll shut it off because what can happen is, is, is this thing malfunctions, don't work, gets clogged up, whatever, uh, this thing can flood. Uh, your HVAC return area and I mean it can flood it good too because you know during the summertime especially right here in deep south I mean your air conditioner can produce about 20 gallons of water a day I mean that's a lot of water in fact I'm going to show you something here in a little bit so in, in, in the same video but th I got this from Harbor Freight uh, this is a Drummond model uh, it came with this hose and a clamp and now uh, this is the discharge hose so it will actually go on this barb fitting there and it's got this little warning not to run this no more than 10 seconds because it'll burn up the pump and basically you need to put water in this before you turn this on uh, to keep it from running dry and so this is what the box looks like uh, I got this and over the weekend in one of their sales I just happened to time it just right now, you're probably wondering, well, why am I buying it? Well, it's not going on my HVAC system. It's actually going on a dehumidifier. Uh, I have a, a dehumidifier in a location that I cannot get that to drain by gravity to where I need it to go, and so I'm adding this to this. And it's pretty interesting little experiment I've got going on, which you'll see in the, the latter part of this video. Uh, but this wasn't that expensive I mean even not on sale it was and I think I, I got this for like 30 bucks I was real pleased to get it at that type of price and so I'm just going to zoom in on the box so you can sort of see you know what the parameters of this particular model is um, I'm not sure I haven't looked at the reviews on it or anything you can also freeze frame this as well if you want to kind of focus in on uh, some of the aspects of this it's not on the bottom and I might as well go ahead and do the instruction manual too because some people want to see that and like I say you can for time's sake you can just freeze frame the video but at least you'll have the instructions for this on the video so you don't have to keep up with this or if you lose it or whatever you can kind of go back to this video and check it out but you're also limited from the amount of distance you can pump this as well. Uh, this particular model does 18 feet. And so that should be sufficient for what I'm going to do. I'd uh, be curious to see how long it lasts as well. Because that dehumidifier I have is actually in the crawl space and it runs all year long. That's something else too. If you have a crawl space, especially here in, in South Alabama, uh, the only crawl spaces that really work are ones that are encapsulated and encapsulated properly where you have a dehumidifier down there actually um, discharging the water outside of the house. All right, guys, well, just keep watching. Well, all right, this is the end result. Uh, this went relatively quick. Uh, usually, it seems like I always have some sort of problem when I do something, regardless of how simple it is. But fortunately, uh, this went pretty quick uh, with not too much problem. And so I kind of got lucky in some respects because this discharge hose, the clear one you see there, which goes up to this, 
I didn't know if it was going to be able to connect to a PEX connection, uh, but it did barely. And so it actually, it's actually pretty tight, which is good because I don't have another hose clamp. Uh, so hopefully that don't blow off. But we'll see. But anyway, you know, it's plugged in and it is working. And so the main thing is, is that you want to make sure this is filled up full of water before you plug it in. You don't want this to run dry. Now, I didn't show this earlier, but it does have a bracket here on the back uh, that you could hang it to a wall if you needed to. And this is the discharge hose from the dehumidifier, the black one right there. And so basically the way this works is kind of like a toilet. It's got a little float valve in there. And so whenever that float valve goes down to a certain point, well, then it'll activate the pump and discharge the water that's in here. And so the way I have it going is, you know, like I showed you earlier, as I cut this T into the condensate line, uh, this condensate line got, actually goes all the way up into the attic because my air handler is in the attic. Now, like I said earlier, at least I think I did, uh, there's a possibility if you have an older home and maybe even a newer one, uh, you could have this condensate pump system uh, there. And so when you change the filter, I can't remember if I said it earlier, see if you have that there. And if you do, just know that these wires uh, should be connected to the thermostat in case it malfunctions. So let's get back on track with this. So uh, right now I have uh, the condensate line for the air conditioner above and now I have the condensate from this dehumidifier in a crawl space now discharging into this single line. I also have it marked purple and purple is the color for gray water. And so the reason I marked it that is because if I'm not around one day, uh, hopefully, you know, someone who knows the color cutting will know what this is. And so this goes on out through the foundation wall and into a 250 gallon tank out here. I've been collecting this condensate water as part of an experiment uh, to see, you know, what I can do with it. And so I've been putting chlorine tablets in it uh, to kind of, you know, keep it clean. I'm not going to drink it, of course, uh, but the way it comes out is like this. Now this line here actually catches the other uh, mini split package. So I've got a lot of condensate water coming into this thing. I would say at least 20 gallons of water a day, but probably more. And so what I have it doing is it's coming out through this bottom pipe right there. I had to get a special adapter for this tank. And I got it running under, underground. It comes up to this uh, max flow pump, which has a pressure switch in it. And so it will cut on anytime water is open anywhere in the system. And so you can see I've got about 50 pounds of pressure on this system. And they got a cutoff valve there. And what this is doing is this is servicing one toilet up there. And so it's been on this toilet for about two weeks now. And so it's kind of interesting to see how well this is going to keep up. You can see I've got a cutoff valve right there. So that's the main water supply piping. In case this doesn't keep up, I can actually cut the water back on uh, to that toilet. And I was hoping I was to be able to expand this uh, to another toilet as well, but it looks like I'll be doing lucky if it can just do this one. And so I haven't really got all this wiring secured yet, but this runs on DC voltage, and that's the power adapter for that. And this is basically a cigarette lighter connection right there. So, you know, it doesn't take much power running on 12 volts. And it's got this filter system coming into it as well. But I'll keep you posted on this to see how well this turns out over time. I mean, now that I've got this other uh, discharge line going into it, you know, it might keep up. We'll just have to see. Take care, guys.